Andrew Tate. Let's take a look at his body language and behavior. Greg, tell us about the videos we're going to watch. This is Andrew Tate's last message after he was deplatformed. If you try to find it now on YouTube, you won't. We had to find it another way. To quickly address the rumors that I'm a sex trafficker and that's why I live in Romania. Firstly, that's a very, very racist attitude to have. I find it strange that the left and people who speak and talk about tolerance and inclusivity will assume that Romania as a country will allow me to be a rapist or that Romania is the kind of place where rape is okay. That's an extremely racist mentality to have. Imagine someone saying that the other way around, that in this country, because it's run by these people, they're inherently bad. That's very unfair on Romania. Romania has been very good to me. It's a great country filled with fantastic people, amazing nature, great food. It's a great place. I live here because I love it. There's no other reason why I live here. They're a European Union nation. They have a strong legal system, just like every other country. And to sit here and say that, oh, Romania is where you can rape people, that's very racist. And I don't understand why nobody is pointing out the fact that anyone who's saying that and believes that is purporting racial stereotypes. That's the first thing. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm gonna start with a positive. Love the cars, cars are great. And I'll drop off from there. I will say this, I think he's saying what he thinks and what he has gotten away with saying, because he's some kind of a, you're gonna have to bloop this, he's some kind of a shithouse philosopher and people have listened to him. So of course he believes that. And so you see him doing the right eye accessing. In this case, I don't think there's any magic to that. I think what he's doing is giving himself time to think and to pontificate. That's what we're seeing. I don't see anything magical. Guys, by the way, anybody we put on who's polarizing, we're gonna get a whole lot of comments one way or the other. Whatever our opinion is, if we said this guy's wonderful or this guy's awful, we're gonna get a lot of comments. So we're expecting that. Don't expect us to respond, just is what it is. Uh, Scott, what do you got? All right, this is a, a fairly interesting one. Uh, well, he takes a deep breath before he starts, and I think he's psychologically prepping at this at this point because apparently he's in a whole lot of trouble from being deplatformed. De he daps with his hands and he gets a little sway going back and forth when he starts as, as well. And what I want you to do is pay attention to the times, to the amount of times he says, "I, I'm, and me," because in this one he says, "I" six times, "me" two times, and "I'm." one time. Now, it gets much more uh, interesting from there in the, in the next video. So try to keep counting the next one. So um, when he says to quickly address the rumor, I'm a sex trafficker, we've got two micro, micro expressions of contempt. And, his, and I think partially what he's doing when he talks, his mouth goes up like that a lot. So it's sort of hard to differentiate the ones that are actual uh, contempt expressions and the ones that aren't, but I think these are the ones that I caught that are, and I only found two real ones in that at, at that spot. And when, when he says sex trafficker, it's on sex, and the second one is when he says that's why, it's on that's. So check that out if you get a chance. Um, and that's a hot point as it should be for him because that's that's one of the reasons he's there, I think, or in this position. Then he says, firstly, that's a very, very racist attitude. When he says ra very, very racist, he's, we've got the, the bottom lids push up a little bit. And we're seeing what's, what's uh, it's close to anger. We're not seeing a full-blown expression of anger, but it's not a micro expression. But it's, um, you know, he looks pretty angry at that point, to me anyway. And then he looks away when he says that. And that's what I call an observe me glance. It gives you time to look at him as he's going through this, as he's thinking about whatever it is. He's looking at you thinking you can look anywhere you want on him. But when he's looking at you in the eye, even though it's on film or video, it, you feel weird about looking them all over. But when you look away, that's when it gives you permission to observe him uh, at, at that distance. Um, then he's looking up to recall his statement. I think that's what a lot of looking up is. I don't see him reading notes. I could have missed that, but I don't see him checking any notes or anything. He may have bullet points somewhere, but maybe not. I didn't see anything like that. He said, in this country, because it's run by these people, that's where you see this um, micro expression. It's actually two of them blended together. And that's anger and contempt. That's another one. And um, what he's doing at that point, he's mimicking the people who are accusing him. He's mimicking his accusers as he does that. It's really interesting because you usually don't see this many, which we're going to see quite a few of these micro expressions that blend emotions. Blending emotions, that's normal. It happens all the time. It's very common. But to see in, in micro expressions like this, this often, that I found that really interesting. And he goes on to use his hands as, as illustrators as well as adapters when he's making that, that weird little thing with his hands like that. 
And when he does illustrate, they seem on time, they seem around the money. So he's probably sincere as he can possibly be about being, uh, about what he's saying. But uh, I think his accent is odd. He sounds like a wizard, you know, he's, because he says things where he uses the T is real. He, it's that terminal T and it just sounds weird quite often. Most of that stuff, I, I can't figure him out. He sounds like, I think he's British and American. Is that correct? I know he's, he's something like that. I'm not sure which one he is, but he's or both British and American. But he's still locked down. He's pretty much under control the whole time. So I just think that's interesting, all the stuff we're seeing. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so, um, yeah, totally agree there on the on the uh, contempt and the, the anger that we're seeing there and the reasons you're putting forward on that, uh, for sure, Scott. The steepling that we that we see there as well, which we'll see start to go up as he gets a little more confident as, he, as he's going along. Th this is not a natural behaviour. Nobody really does this naturally. It's a learned behaviour. It's one that, that people know is meant to have status, meant to have authority. It's not likeable. It's not likable, though. So so if he's trying to be liked, and there's many reasons why you wouldn't like him, uh, but this would be just one of the many reasons why he makes himself, to some, but not all people, very unlikable. Um, it's very interesting. Oh, listen, you know, when I'm amongst friends, like, you know, I am here with, with, with Greg and Scott and Chase, if I, if I come on camera and, and I have my jacket like, like this... Uh, or actually be like that. Um, guys, what are you, what are you going to say before we go live or before we start recording? Yeah, you're going you're gonna to go, hey, you know, you're going to tell me, aren't you? Which help, look at his jacket. Nobody has told him, which either means he's alone, he's Johnny No Mates at this point, or he's got people there and they're going to let him do that. It's got to be one or the other because that's not the cut of the, of the jacket. So, um, so interesting. Uh, somebody has not helped him groom or they've let him be groomed like that. Really interesting. Uh, interesting how he moves from sex trafficker to, which is the call, you know, uh, people think I might be a sex tra trafficker. He then uh, moves it into the idea of racism, then on to rapist and then great food. Lovely transition there. Um, just point of order. Uh, the the um, Romania is not a race. It's a, it's, a, it's a country. And so it wouldn't be racism. It would be xenophobia or something like that, or just a general kind of national prejudice. So it's kind of interesting how he goes, um, you know, if, if you call me a sex trafficker, you are racist. He's gone for the biggest possible thing, which is not accurate. He's an ex chess player. I would uh, apparently it was quite good. So he says, I don't know. Uh, but um, certainly his dad was meant to be a very, very good chess player. I'm surprised that he doesn't have the accuracy there. I, I would be, I would expect a little more accuracy. So my guess is he's done that on purpose to go, what's the grandest thing I could call somebody who's, who suspects me of sex trafficking? I'll call them a racist. Um, yeah, I, d interesting accent that we'll see coming out there, Scott. You get you get satisfaction where he doesn't pronounce the T there. It's a bit kind of Mick Jaggerish, you know, satisfaction kind of going on there. And so we're getting this. It's a Luton accent, I believe. I was, believe he was born in Bedfordshire. Not very exciting place uh, to be born. Uh, sorry to everybody in Luton and Bedfordshire. I, I say this as somebody from the next door county, Northamptonshire. So I know about how unexciting some parts of the Midlands are. Uh, uh, can be. Uh, that is all I've got on that one. So Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I live just off of Northampton Boulevard uh, as well. So fine place, Probably. fine place to Mark, Mark, let me ask you this real quick. Mark, did you did you play those people in football? Your team played their team in high school? No one's Bedford. We, we we probably would have played some Bedfordshire team at at some point. They grow they grow uh, turnips there and stuff like that. It's very flat, very so flat ground. Luton has rivalry. an airport though. It has a fantastic airport. So it's not a, a football rivalry we're dealing with. No, 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 okay. no, no. Neither Northampton nor Bedford can play football. Oh, okay, no. all right, just checking. Yeah, all Sorry, right, Chase. So this is a statement from a person who's previously made a statement and admitted moving to Romania from what I understand, because police are less likely to investigate sexual assault cases in that country. And that was on record from what I understand. And he's using this racism strategy that he has spent dozens of hours condemning on the internet. 
dozens and dozens and dozens condemning this. And this uh, eyebrow flash right at the word racist is not uh, in agreement with anger or even disagreement. It's a show of scoring a point and not making a point. It's scoring a point, not making a point in conversation. And he's he publicly said he's moving there because of that reason. But what we're seeing here, in my opinion, he's playing a character. This is a character being played. There's no truthful emotions. And the hands are down in what I tend to call the surrender steeple. And Greg has talked about this on a lot of previous videos before. This steeple goes up for confidence and it starts to go down for surrender. And, the ste and this surrender steeple is also doubling its job as genital protection. The, the hands are in front of the genitals, in between the camera, protecting himself. And he's already communicated through his online presence that he's lacking in my opinion, lacking a self-identity. I think he doesn't know himself very well. He tends to define who he is and what he's capable of by followers and buying material things like cars and stuff to assist with his self-image, not his public image, but his self-image, how he sees himself is defined by other people and objects, not internally. So I think we have a problem with knowing himself. I think it's just a guy who's built a character that kind of thrives on attention. And the identity that you're seeing is largely something of a creation instead of something that's naturally developed. The character is still there in large part, but this is kind of like a cubic zirconia instead of a diamond. One's made on purpose, one's the real thing. To quickly address the rumors that I'm a sex trafficker and that's why I live in Romania. Firstly, that's a very, very racist attitude to have. I find it strange that the left and people who speak and talk about tolerance and inclusivity will assume that Romania as a country will allow me to be a rapist or that Romania is the kind of place where rape is okay. That's an extremely racist mentality to have. Imagine someone saying that the other way around, that in this country, because it's run by these people, they're inherently bad. That's very unfair on Romania. Romania has been very good to me. It's a great country filled with fantastic people, amazing nature, great food. It's a great place. I live here because I love it. There's no other reason why I live here. They're a European Union nation. They have a strong legal system, just like every other country. And to sit here and say that, oh, Romania is where you can rape people, that's very racist. And I don't understand why nobody is pointing out the fact that anyone who's saying that and believes that is purporting racial stereotypes. That's the first thing. I want to dedicate this YouTube channel, any other remaining social medias I have, my email list, and my Instagram at some point in the future to the Tate Foundation and speak purely about the positivity I'm doing for the world. Because in the meantime, and at least for the next few months or years, it's gonna be very difficult to talk bad about me when people only see the money I'm donating and how I'm helping people. And I don't just give money in a very lazy, charitable way. I get out in my car, I go on the ground, I help people myself. I drove my Rolls Royce to Ukraine. I bought hundreds of coats and shoes for women and children fleeing the conflict. I didn't film the refugees. I hate when people do that. So we'll be documenting that. I think that's a good way for people to start to learn about the truth. I'm really relieved this happened. I feel good. I feel happy. I don't think I could have got everybody's attention without this. I don't think I would have had a chance to make a clean break and a clean start and explain the truth of my character and my heart without this. I think that if I was never banned, I would have keep trying to tell the truth and my haters would have kept ignoring it and kept making negative videos about me and it would have spiraled out of control until someone in my family was hurt or an attempt was made on my life. Any of my serious fans who have watched all my content know that I've had attempts on my life before, way before YouTube, 10 or 15 years ago. It's something I intimately understand, life and death. And it's not something I wish to revisit. I feel the hate around me was being accelerated to a point of danger for myself and my loved ones. So I'm very glad this happened because I feel like I now have a chance to tell the truth. And I also feel like the social media companies are very understanding of their responsibilities and will always reflect national consciousness. And as people understand the truth about me and my heart, their opinions about me will change also. 
You know, the Bible is full of redemption stories. So are superhero movies, right? The guy starts off bad and then turns good. Or the guy that you think is a bad guy turns out to be a good guy with good intentions all along. He was just misunderstood. I feel like the human psyche is very intrinsically understanding of these narratives and stories. I think people understand a redemption arc. They can understand when they retrospectively look back on certain events or actions or words, and with their new understanding of his actual intentions, everything looks different. They look back and go, oh, now I know who he truly is. I understand what he meant by that. Now I know who he truly is. I understand why that was said. And everything changes. I truly believe that this is a chance for me to move my social media purely to my charitable acts. Even if my Instagram is reinstated, it's only going to be about the Tate Foundation. There'll be no pictures of Bugattis anymore. Sorry, gentlemen. And it allows me to conduct my philanthropy in the physical world as opposed to so much in the digital world trying to inspire men. It's an avenue change. It's a life path change that God has chosen for me. And I'm happy with that. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, where'd you start? Where'd you start on this one? Well, let me give it a go. Um, I, I want to, he says, um, uh, I don't know whether he stresses want there because he wants to uh, put out there that he's not being forced to, but, but, um, but I will would be better than I want. I will says it will happen. I want says it may not happen. Um, says the Instagram piece at some point, I think that's because he got blocked. And so his Instagram isn't even up and functioning at this point. But if it, it does get back up and functioning, that'll go to charity uh, as, as well. Um, email list, there's a lot of blink rate on email list as well. So I think there's summing up with his email list as well. I don't know what, you know, whether he doesn't, it's not a big list or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that, but there's something up there. Um, but around all of that, the Tate Foundation, lots uh, an eyebrow raise. So again, he's trying to engage us with this and go, hey, look at me, look what I'm what I'm doing. Why? Because it'll be it's gonna be very difficult for people to talk bad about me when they see how much money I'm donating. That <laughs> like, that's not the reason. That's not the reason to do it. That's not the reason. And then I can't believe, did he allow then that that IG post of him saying I drove my Rolls Royce to to Ukraine? Did he edit that in? Because it's just like, look, you will he will need um a com he'll need some a spanner for that, you know, for that Rolls Royce. He'll need an, an utter complete spanner for that to keep that to keep that going. Um, so I can't believe that he allowed that to be put in because that is just risible. It's laughable. Uh, very lazy, very lazy charitable way. So everybody else who doesn't drive their Rolls Royce to the Ukraine, to Ukraine um, is just, that's just lazy charity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's unbelievable. Uh, God, what, oh, look, let me just drop to the end of this because it's it's just so daunting what happens there. Um, it's, great, it's just utterly grandiose, utterly grandiose, biblical superheroes. Um, uh, it's kind of, you know, God has chosen me. I think he says it, doesn't he? God has chosen me for, for this. Um, he's kind of the dark knight. He's dark knight and Jesus at the same time. If that's not grandiose, I don't know what is. Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, so let me tell you a funny thing. Chase told me about this guy. I'd never heard of him. He said, hey, you, we look at this guy. I was like, is this an Old Spice commercial? When I first went and heard the guy talk, because it was just like something that odd to me to listen to this guy. But there's also a couple of other characters, and I'll show my age in this. This guy came out of kids or young men who feel in, you know, like they have no power and that kind of thing. And he created a space. Now, whether it's an act or not, you would hope that's an act whether it's an act or not he's filling the same role rush limbaugh back in the 90s fill for people who felt powerless but who were middle-aged so he's doing it for younger people i think a lot of kids were following him. and that's a dangerous thing when it's a young kid who's listening to it because if it's character good it's comedy if it's character andrew dice clay with all that misogynistic stuff he spouted way back when was a character too 
but I don't think he had a big following like this and kids could access. The world's so different now that, you know, who knows? Let's hope he had a plan, but it doesn't appear to be. So I would say the organism does what made the organism successful. And clearly he's doing what he has done in the past. This message is not intended for his core audience. This message is intended for someone else. It's his last opportunity. And if you don't believe that, here's a way to tell. He almost says, I'd get off my ass and go deliver this aid, but he doesn't. He goes, I get, I drive. And you can hear, I get off, my, I drive. And then of course, Mark, he drives his, I agree. If you're gonna drive a Rolls, you better take a wrench or some other tools with you to make that happen. I agree with you hundred percent. As he walks through here, I think he's trying to resonate with a new audience, but doesn't understand. He's still doing exactly what he did with his other audience, pontificating and that kind of thing. And you're right, when he starts talking about, there's lots of redemption stories in the Bible. I, I usually think in the Bible, if you start off as a bad guy, you end up, the lesson is you end up getting whacked. Something bad happens to you. That's the whole lesson. Usually don't get redeemed and that kind of thing. Maybe I'm wrong and put it in the comments. I won't see him, but put it in the comments. Um, I My other favorite thing here is he's got mixed messaging. And Mark, I, it goes back to your, I hate you all. This is God, you know, the right so message in the wrong language. He says, I'm glad to see you. In, or it would be like me saying to you guys, I'm, I'm glad to see you, you know, and squinting. He goes, I feel relieved, narrowing of the eyes. I feel good, eye blocking. I feel happy, narrowing. Those are not happy and feel good and those kinds of things. He's keenly aware that he has to find some positive in this situation to be able to look like he has some control and some authority. And I, I just, I'll leave it at the last thing or two. When he says, I no more photos of Bugattis, he inhales and withdraws his lips. That's a, like a damn kind of a move. I'll leave it at that and hand it to Chase. Yeah, this whole video is kind of like he hired a, a bad image management company to, to write this script. In my opinion, this is all our opinion. All it is. But uh, he's filming himself doing everything instead of encouraging others to help people. So this is 100% self-serving. But, you know, I'm I'm glad it benefited people maybe in the end, or at least I hope that it actually, those things actually made it to the people that needed them. And you can see this perfectly when he describes it in his own words. He says, it's going to be very difficult to talk bad about me. That's the reason I'm doing this. He describes it in his own words. I'm doing this, and now it's going to be very difficult to talk bad about me. And at the critical point here, when he says, uh, I don't think I've got everybody's attention without this. I would have got everybody's attention without this. That was the goal. That's his own words. My end goal was getting everyone's attention. And this show how how he, maybe he's viewing the situation of just this is more attention on me. It's good. So we're seeing some potentially narcissistic behavior here. It seems almost parasitic uh, in a way. And when he's talking about the attempts on his life, he redirects it back to himself and lets us know that he's intimately familiar with life and death now all of a sudden uh, because of this thing. I've been on nine deployments and I wouldn't say that about myself. Uh, but he somehow intimately understands all of life and death now, very familiar with it. And when he says, I'm very glad this happened, there's strong facial resistance. And he's trying to block out the thought. His whole face closes down. You can see it clear as day. And when he says, I want to tell the truth in my heart, I think what people are worried about wasn't the truth in his heart. It's the truth in the world, in, in real life. Because there's a difference between those two things, I would imagine. And right when he saw about Bible and redemption stories, he already views himself as a superhero. This may be the narrative that he's been planning all along. To make this into a story would be captivating for lots of people. And this transition that he's trying to make is hopefully not just a pre-planned plot, but he's trying to tell us he's a superhero and that he's just like the people in the Bible. We just don't understand yet. So maybe once we get educated, we'll understand he belongs in the Bible. He's basically a superhero. This entire character is kind of like someone acting like they've been told to play a role of fancy and well-educated, but it's kind of not like a real human. And it feels like this to you too, I bet, because of 
the awkward pauses, the weird eye movement, and the lack of any expression of any real, genuine, single emotion here. And I think your subconscious, even if you're not a behavior profiler, your subconscious is picking up on this and you're getting a gut feeling from it. And that's a lot of where it's coming from. Scott? Yeah, I agree, man. And did you count the times he said I in this thing? 35 times. Whoa. 35 times he says I. It's all about him. And then he says uh, my or me 28 times. Count him. It, it's, it's unbelievable. His biggest illustrators are when he's when he's talking about his charitable deeds. And when that video starts, it's it's gross. That is gross. I don't know if anybody counted the number of coats or shoes you could see in there, but it didn't look like hundreds in three uh, grocery carts there at baskets. That's not hundreds. Another thing I thought was odd about this, and I'm gonna question whether he really went or not. I have no earthly idea. He says he did. Somebody with this personality type, they're gonna have some like you were saying, Chase, they're gonna have somebody video them. He's going to want to show himself doing that. And he didn't show the, the refugees because there weren't any. I don't think he went over there. He might have. It's 500 miles away from where he is. If he's in Romania, Ukraine is 500 miles away by car. That's how, long, that, that's how many miles it is. So it's over 500 miles. I don't think he went. I don't think he did it. I really don't because he would have had his picture made. He would have shown those people and how he was helping these suffering people. And he would have found the worst case scenario to show you. So I don't think he did that at all. Um, and so he said, I didn't film the refugees because I, did, I don't like it when people do that. The little robot voice said that on the video. Yeah. Well, it's because I don't think he went, man. Do you guys think he went or not? No. Don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't know. know. It's a long way to take a roller. I tell you. Yeah. I agree with yeah. you. And I'm a car uh, guy. <laughs> and not a picture of yourself, not a picture of yourself. And he had to say a Rolls Royce. It's just gross. That whole thing is just gross. When he says, I'm really relieved this happened. I feel good. I feel happy. There's an, a micro expression of anger when he says relieved. And then um, then that pause in the compressed lips. And he can he he's, tries to be contained, but we still see that that anger come out there at that point. He's using his hands and his and his uh, his shoulders as he adapts to the to those key words in that sentence. And what I thought was interesting is he's got what's called a linguistic virus. And what it is, is this. We've heard him at the top talking about automatic and things like that, hitting those hard T's and making sure his O's are all, per, you know, everything is perfect. Then he says, um, uh, what's the word? When he, when he says haters, he says haters. There's this thing that happens on the Internet, and, and it drives me nuts when people it says saying buttons. They say buttons or buttons. Oh, but, I oh, I cannot stand it when they do that. I've had to quit watching. I'd, I'd unsubscribe to a couple of things because they say button or button. Button's the worst, but I hate button. He does that on haters. I think he's trying to connect with those people. I think he's got this this uh, this linguistic virus because he watches a lot of that stuff and he feels like he's part of it. So I think he's trying trying to connect with them that way by using it by using that uh, haters. Um, when he says, I'm very glad this happened, um, another um, huge micro expression of pain and contempt, especially on glad. And uh, this has been been life altering for him. He's not glad this happened. He can't be glad this happened. How can he be glad this happened when he said to get back so people can know the truth and all that? No, I think that speech pattern is an age thing. You think so? I do. Because right? Manhattan used to be the only word you'd hear said that way, Manhattan. And you hear mm -hmm. a lot of younger people under 40, almost every stop with double Manhattan? T's. Manhattan? do that now. Yeah, Manhattan. Uh, that's common up in Manhattan. But he doesn't Where, do it up to that point. That's my, that's the okay. up to that spot. Well, he stops his teeth, like, and satisfaction, he doesn't do the T's. Like, he's got he's got a bit of a Luton. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's the English accent. In I there. thought he was they, born in Washington. D.C. He born moved. in Washington, yeah. but then he, then he grew up in, okay. in England. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that a rough? Okay. Is that a rough area, Mark? Is there some Luton. rough areas there? No, okay. No, I, I was no, trying to remember tedious, where. Just a tedious area. Now everybody, everybody in Luton's going to come at me, going, "No, we're yeah, we're Luton, we're hard, mate, we're hard." <laughs> You're the king's oh, best. Say, bring it on, Luton. bring it on, Luton. You don't the know king. where I live, Luton. Come get me. <laughs> we know. Come you got on. our email. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is Email me. It is an age thing. I think it's more. Or people say, "Oh, is this gluten free?" Right, gluten free. They say it all the oh. time. Yeah, gluten. a lot of younger oh. people. I deal with younger people, and they do it all the time. It's different. 
It's Sage, I think. Oh, it drives me nuts. Uh, but listen for him to say budding. Oh, oh <laughs> man. I Is he pressing your it. buttons? Is he pressing <laughs> your buttons? Yeah. I want to dedicate this YouTube channel, any other remaining social medias I have, my email list, and my Instagram at some point in the future to the Tate Foundation and speak purely about the positivity I'm doing for the world. Because in the meantime, and at least for the next few months or years, it's gonna be very difficult to talk bad about me when people only see the money I'm donating and how I'm helping people. And I don't just give money in a very lazy, charitable way. I get out in my car, I go on the ground, I help people myself. I drove my Rolls Royce to Ukraine. I bought hundreds of coats and shoes for women and children fleeing the conflict. I didn't film the refugees. I hate when people do that. So we'll be documenting that. I think that's a good way for people to start to learn about the truth. I'm really relieved this happened. I feel good. I feel happy. I don't think I could have got everybody's attention without this. I don't think I would have had a chance to make a clean break and a clean start and explain the truth of my character and my heart without this. I think that if I was never banned, I would have keep trying to tell the truth and my haters would have kept ignoring it and kept making negative videos about me and it would have spiraled out of control until someone in my family was hurt or an attempt was made on my life. Any of my serious fans who have watched all my content know that I've had attempts on my life before, way before YouTube, 10 or 15 years ago. It's something I intimately understand, life and death. And it's not something I wish to revisit. I feel the hate around me was being accelerated to a point of danger for myself and my loved ones. So I'm very glad this happened because I feel like I now have a chance to tell the truth. And I also feel like the social media companies are very understanding of their responsibilities and will always reflect national consciousness. And as people understand the truth about me and my heart, their opinions about me will change also. You know, the Bible is full of redemption stories. So are superhero movies, right? The guy starts off bad and then turns good, or the guy that you think is a bad guy turns out to be a good guy with good intentions all along. He was just misunderstood. I feel like the human psyche is very intrinsically understanding of these narratives and stories. I think people understand a redemption arc. They can understand when they retrospectively look back on certain events or actions or words, and with their new understanding of his actual intentions, everything looks different. They look back and go, oh, now I know who he truly is. I understand what he meant by that. Now I know who he truly is. I understand why that was said and everything changes. I truly believe that this is a chance for me to move my social media purely to my charitable acts. Even if my Instagram is reinstated, it's only gonna be about the Tate Foundation. There'll be no pictures of Bugattis anymore. Sorry, gentlemen. And it allows me to conduct my philanthropy in the physical world as opposed to so much in the digital world trying to inspire men. It's an avenue change. It's a life path change that God has chosen for me. And I'm happy with that. I hold no ill will against any social media platforms. I hold no ill will against any of the people who hate me or who have tried to spread lies about me. I truly pray for you all. I think that to be a person filled with so much hate that you think making videos insulting a man and encouraging your viewers to go and insult him and his deceased father and his family members, I think that is a horrible way to live. I would never want to experience that level of hate in my heart. The people who are making endless videos celebrating my ban or talking hate about me, that hate is never gonna satisfy you. You need to learn to let go and live with a heart filled with love. You need to be content with, with yourself because if you're obsessed with trying to hate on another person, the poison's inside of you, it's not inside of me. It doesn't affect me as much as it affects you. It, you can't feel hatred for somebody without it affecting your mood. So this is something for you guys to address and I genuinely pray for you. I have no ill will against any of my haters. I have no ill will against any social media companies. I have no ill will against anybody. Chase, what do you got? 
this entire video is using the collapsed steeple again. And you're going to see this often in uh, defeat and surrender speeches. Even when people uh, surrender their office to somebody who won an election, you'll see the same kind of downward steeple keeping the groin protected. This is an unconscious fear mechanism. And something is just off with the eye movement in this clip. Might be looking at an off-screen giant cue card. You know, you'd write it on with a giant Sharpie marker or something like that. Might be doing this behavior on purpose to look like more of an alpha. Like, I don't have to make solid eye contact the entire time. Or he's not sure where to look so that it's not awkward to the camera the whole time because he's maybe lacking self-confidence. We know that, in my opinion, he's lacking some self-identity and knowing himself. And I think he had maybe some training. But there's some contempt here while he's saying he feels no ill will. It's on the right side of his face. I think that's a strong feeling of contempt when he says, I feel no ill will towards these people. He continues the contempt and the anger microfacial expressions when he's saying he's totally fine with his haters. And this is what concealment looks like. If you watch this again, this facial expression when he's talking about his haters, that's what concealment looks like. And when he's saying the poison's inside of you, not inside of me, there's a rolling shoulder shrug of both shoulders like this. They're not simultaneous. When the lower part of your brain, the automatic part that you're not thinking about, does this, it does it at the same time because it's not having to coordinate. But when you're physically trying to do something and make a gesture look natural, it does it miss time because you haven't rehearsed a, a good shoulder shrug. This indicates maybe a lack of certainty, low confidence in the statement. And when he says there's no ill will against any of my haters, I actually think he might like the idea of having these haters. And I think that may speak to some of the personality here. But I think what we're seeing is a character. This is a character that was built or developed. I think maybe some of this stuff was done on purpose because he's or someone has created this story arc for this character. He's injected the story arc idea. He's even said a character arc, I think, in this video. So maybe this was a deliberately injected thing of this big fall and then a rise again. And he's finding himself again. I want to talk about the Bible. I want to talk about charity. I want to talk about money. I want to talk about all this stuff. So this kind of like it just deliberately stabbing these pieces of this story plot into this video. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, let's first start by saying whatever he's done, he's created a hell of a business model for himself because yeah. he made a ton of money. What did I hear somebody say? $300 million, something like that. Ton of money with this character, whether it's him at his core or whether it's something he grew to be, what you feed, you become. You know, and it, sometimes people mistake, they fall for their own press. They read what people say about them and suddenly that's who they are. Maybe that's going on. Don't know. None of that really matters. What we're doing is looking at what we see. When he says, I feel no ill will to social media, you're right. That contempt pops right out of there. It's, and he does a lot of odd speech patterns and that kind of thing for me, but it, it, that's clear. When he says, people who hate me, I feel no ill will, his forehead goes up. He's asking for approval. That's one of the few times you see it. And because, like me, he's got a wonderfully large forehead, you can see it very well. Not just a forehead, nothing to cover it, so you can't miss it. He has good control of his hands, but you're dead on. We always talk about steepling. Mr. You know, this is the Simpsons, the guy on, on the Simpsons going, yes, excellent. Yes. And we always perceive it as a power move when people do that. I always coach people not to do it because you compromise, your hands move forward, and when you're compromised, you stand like that. That's what he's doing. Now, he's holding his hands that way, and there may be intent behind doing that, but he has good control of his hands, and they're not dancing around. When he talks about his father, he's very emphatic, and his hands actually move at that point. His face hardens, and his eyes narrow. His, and when he talks about people being obsessed, we see that right canine, right canine exposed again. So there's some of him trying to get across his message and be contrite, at the same time trying to show his his body is trying to show what he's really thinking. And so it chase your dead on. Hiding all that information I think is difficult when you're trying to be contrite and you're trying to come in and try to get people to follow you some other way. Look, the guy's made a ton of money. He'll probably continue to make a ton of money. He's just gonna shift platform. Whatever you think of him might not matter. This is, there's a reason he evolved to be where he was and somebody else will fill that role. Scott, what do you got? All right. When he says, I feel no ill, or I have no ill, hold no ill will against any, any media, social media platforms, 
he's just pandering to him. He's just letting them know that he's okay with them, man, even though they've kicked him off. Because he's going to try, I'm sure he's going to try to come back or try to get back on those, you know, because that's, that's his life on there. He says, I hold no ill will um, for the people who hate me and tried to spread lies. This is what he has to say, personality wise, um, or th that goes against what he would say personality wise. So, so he, ha but he has to say it. He has to say that, but it bothers him. Um, and when he begins his life lesson, that's when we see the most head movement so far with that. I agree with you guys about the, uh, the, uh, the steepling. We see a lot of, a lot of adapting at this point, more than we've seen so far, obviously it's toward the end. He's hoping to wrap it up and get, get finished with it and, and move on. Um, that's that's about all I got on that one. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, it's just some quick stuff. Um, he says his Instagram, if, it, if he gets it back, will be dedicated to the Tate Foundation. And then there's quite a pronounced vocal click after that. That usually denotes to me that there's um, some uncomfortable... Uh, uh, there's something uncomfortable about that. Uh, I think he says it'll be totally dedicated. I don't think it'll be entirely dedicated to charitable work because this is the type of person um, that can't help himself, can't help himself, but to promote himself and aggrandize himself. And, and I say that as a criticism, not a hate. And so you've got to make sure whatever side of an issue that, that, that you're on, that you don't conflate criticism with hate. They're very, very different things. And so again, what he's doing here, just like he, he, he went from, um, from people uh, suggesting that he might have trafficked women to going, well, that is racist. He's going, if you criticize me, you're a hate monger. Anybody who does that has, has just put a stake a little bit too far out there. And, and the, the, why do you do that? So you simply can't be debated on it. It's to cause people to back down immediately. Uh, so yeah, call me a hater. I'm just being critical of you, simply being critical of you. I would be critical of things like um, you giving life lessons, like a kind of a Buddha figure at this point. He's moved, moved now from being a superhero to being a, uh, a messiah to being, uh, yeah, a, 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 a understanding life and the universe in its entirety. He says it doesn't affect me as much as it affects you. And that's that kind of hate feeling. So it, it does affect him. It does affect him. I think what we are seeing here is actually how much this criticism affects this person. So think, think about the personality type that doesn't like criticism, likes to aggrandize themselves and will get easily punctured by even the slightest piece of, of criticism. I hold no ill will against any social media platforms. I hold no ill will against any of the people who hate me or who have tried to spread lies about me. I truly pray for you all. I think that to be a person filled with so much hate that you think making videos insulting a man and encouraging your viewers to go and insult him and his deceased father and his family members, I think that is a horrible way to live. I would never want to experience that level of hate in my heart. The people who are making endless videos celebrating my ban or talking hate about me, that hate is never gonna satisfy you. You need to learn to let go and live with a heart filled with love. You need to be content with, with yourself because if you're obsessed with trying to hate on another person, the poison's inside of you, it's not inside of me. It doesn't affect me as much as it affects you. It, you can't feel hatred for somebody without it affecting your mood. So this is something for you guys to address and I genuinely pray for you. I have no ill will against any of my haters. I have no ill will against any social media companies. I have no ill will against anybody. All right, well, let's throw around the room and we'll 30 seconds or less say what we, we think has happened, see what we're looking at. Mark, why don't you go first? Yeah, I mean, I love, love seeing that because I love that Rolls Royce moment. That just, you can't write that stuff. You simply can't. If you tried to make a comedy about this, I, I you couldn't write it. 
And, you know, to take a roll of 500 miles is, uh, you know, as we've said before, you're going to need you're going to need a big tool. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe you've got one and maybe you haven't. I don't know. Chase. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so close. So close. Uh, all right. Let's do that again. What tipped you off? What tipped you that off? Zoom had a big notification. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. same thing over here. That's a yeah, yeah, pay yeah. attention. You're like, you're muting. Damn. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll bring you in again. No need. Chase. There's no need. Chase, what do you got? Yes, yeah, entire video is essentially this. If you think I'm bad, you're wrong. I donate money and you haven't learned that yet. I'm also perfect and amazing. I regret nothing, but that's only because you don't understand it at all. I'm awesome. Have a nice day. I'm also awesome. That's <laughs> the summary of the video. And I think he, in his deepest mind, I think he means well. I don't think he means to hurt people. Uh, so I will say that for him. I don't think he's out to hurt anyone. I think he's out to elevate himself. And he may hurt people on accident in the process, but I don't think he's deliberately trying to push anybody down. I just think he's trying to elevate himself. And it's at the cost of whoever the hell gets in the way. Greg? Well, guys, he's a kickboxer. You know, look, I come from a world where testosterone forces people to do a lot of things. You know, I'm 60. When I was young, of course, I had a whole lot more testosterone, did a whole lot more stupid things. If you're a kickboxer by nature and you see everything as an adversary and you got high testosterone levels when you're young, you're probably going to be less risk averse and take those chances. Every time you get rewarded for one of those stupid things you say or do, then you're going to do it again and you're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. All of us are also attention seekers. You're watching us. So clearly we're attention seekers as well. It's a matter of how you take that space. You know, people will be offended by some of the things we say, like me saying to you earlier, I probably won't read that comment. But the key becomes how much do you listen to people and how do you stop rather than running for the fence every time you get it. If a guy's running for the fence every time he got, got the ball and gotten away with it, he's going to keep getting bigger and bigger ego. And they threw water on him at the last minute. And here we are. This is almost comedy to me to watch that people think that this guy should be giving them life lessons. But when you're a young man and you think cars and all of this stuff make you into whatever it is you're trying to be, and he's giving you the image you want, then he can kind of become your life coach. It's just a matter of whether that's what you want your sons to be, or that's what you want to be, then this is the right product for you, not for me. Scott, what do you got? I think this is a great study in, in seeing how someone's ego can get out of hand and get you in a lot of trouble by mouthing off uh, with a huge ego like that. So, I, I, and I think I, I go back to the worst part of it where he did that video and said, I drove my Rolls Royce to and help these people. That For me, that said, as soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, I'm out. I, I get it. I, I see what one section of why, of why he's in trouble. The other stuff, I'm not familiar with what, what all he got in trouble for, but yeah. I can see why he probably would if he's got an, uh, an ego like that. It's huge. So I know it sounds bad, but that's what I think. All right, fellas, I think this was a good one, and see you next time. So what do you got? I'm going to say, I don't know, I'm going to say, I don't know, I'm going to say, I don't know.